Hey, Catherine? I just walked into the house. Are you out or something? I don't see a trace of you anywhere. Listen, there's something important I need to discuss with you. We've put so much effort into planning our wedding, and now the big day is almost here. Where on earth are you right now? I've headed to our favorite cafe nearby, so give me a shout when you're back and I'll be there in a jiffy. There's something I really need to go over with you. Brooklyn? Seriously? What was going through your mind? I still can't wrap my head around what you did. Out of nowhere, you just decide to hit me? I demand an explanation. I need to understand why on earth you would think that kind of behavior is even remotely acceptable. You know damn well why that happened. And guess what? I've already spilled the beans to Brian. Yep. I made sure he knows all about you eloping with another man. Where is this coming from? There's absolutely no truth to that. None whatsoever. I'd like to see you prove that. <laughs> How in the world am I supposed to prove that I didn't have an affair? You can't just go around making accusations like that without any evidence. It doesn't matter. Brian trusts me and is going to break off the engagement. So do us all a favor and spare yourself the embarrassment of showing up at the wedding tomorrow. Trust me, it won't be a pleasant sight for anyone. I'm taking care of every detail to ensure you're left all alone, drowning in your self-pity. Things were going just fine until two days ago. What happened out of the blue? I'm totally confused here. And speaking of which, I still can't wrap my head around why you thought it was okay to slap me. What did I do to deserve that? Everything was peachy for me until the day before yesterday too. Then, I discovered your little secret. Turns out, you were never honest with me. So you conveniently forgot to mention that you grew up in some sketchy house for wayward children, huh? You deserve every ounce of crap that headed your way. Um, hold up a sec. I don't know where you're getting your information from, but I never hid that fact. I distinctly remember telling Brian about it ages ago, so he's been well aware of it. He didn't have a single issue with it, trust me. I'm pretty sure he's filled you in on that too. If you bothered to pay attention. Oh really? Did he explicitly mention it to me? Gee, I can't seem to remember, but get this. I happened to stumble upon that little tidbit from someone else. I was genuinely shocked, like mind blown. Turns out, you're practically a criminal, huh? So what's your brilliant excuse for keeping that under wraps, huh? So you think it's a valid reason to physically attack me just because I grew up in foster care? That's not how any decent person reacts when they learn something like that. In fact, it's downright criminal behavior on your part. I'd watch your mouth, you little urchin. I've never committed a crime in my life. You're the one who attacked me without provocation. Oops, my bad. I never intended to handle things with violence. Seriously, it kind of just happened. You know, your face just got under my skin and boom, I lost it. Next thing I knew, I already hit you. You get it, right? Well, the truth is... I was planning to bug you non-stop until you called off the engagement yourself. But my hand acted faster than my mouth. <laughs> Oops. Do you find this amusing? How can you crack jokes in a situation like this? None of your words can justify your actions. Not even a bit. You caused me so much pain that I couldn't even get back on my feet for a while. You truly wounded me. I had to see a doctor afterwards. Oh, really? I guess I didn't realize how strong I am. But hey, that's not my fault, right? No matter what excuse you had, it wasn't cool to deceive me, right? That's reason enough for me. I didn't deceive you. Why don't you see that? I understand that some people might have concerns about my upbringing. I faced that judgment from others throughout my life. I apologize if I didn't show enough understanding regarding that matter. Apologies won't cut it anymore. I won't tolerate your deceitful behavior. Obviously. I've discussed this whole mess with Brian. He's on the same page and thinks it's best to call off the wedding. I couldn't let him end up with such a lousy partner, you know? I know that Brian only could have agreed to this because you've told him that I eloped with another man. Or, to put it more plainly, because you've lied to him. 
What sort of human being could do that? Someone is really looking out for her dear son. Anyway, you don't have to bother showing up tomorrow. But hey, if you do show up, I'll be sure to spread the word that you're some kind of tramp who cheated on my son and ran off with another dude. And even if you somehow managed to deceive Brian into going through with it, trust me, the wedding would be an epic disaster. Stop it already. Do you have any idea how many people you would hurt if you did something like that? It wouldn't just be me. It would be hard on Brian, too. In fact, it would ruin the whole wedding ceremony. Do you want to humiliate your own son on his wedding day? I've been saying it all along, but seriously, you don't have to come. As long as you're not there on the big day, we can carry on with everything smoothly and without any delays. What? How exactly is the wedding going to proceed without the bride? Oh, don't you worry. I've got it all figured out already. You know, there's this friend of Brian's who's been dying to marry him. And guess what? She's way out of your league. She's from a respectable family. I'm like you, you little scoundrel. So, we'll have a new bride just to shock everyone on the day. The cool thing is, the new bride's family is super loaded. And they happen to be tight with the wedding venue owner. They've already sorted out all the necessary adjustments. Like swapping in the new bride and everything. This is just unbelievable. If you dare show up and ruin the event, I'll have security toss you out in a heartbeat. You'll be on the streets where you belong before you can blink an eye. Oh, and don't even think about your guests getting in either. I've made it crystal clear to the venue not to let them in. So believe me, there won't be a single soul at this wedding who gives a damn about the change of bride. You're really something. I have to hand it to you. By the way, the new bride is the one who actually told me about your squalid past. It really is a small world, isn't it? I see. Very well then. So Brian is saying he's fine with breaking off the engagement? I just want to confirm that. I already told you that. Don't waste my time. Then go ahead and do what you please. Thanks for your understanding. Surprisingly, you're catching on faster than I thought, which is quite convenient, I must say. For someone who grew up in a foster home, you've got a half-decent brain. Then naturally, you won't be uttering a single word about how I laid a hand on you. Not a peep. Got it? I hope it's crystal clear. After all, you're the one who deceived me. I hear that Brian paid you a visit, huh? What the hell is he doing heading over to your place? You better not have spilled any beans to him, you hear me? I explicitly told you not to say a damn thing. I should have known better than to trust someone like you. If you've opened your mouth, mark my words, you'll pay for it. The thing is, sorry to say, there's a good deal of information that has gotten out regarding me. So there's a real mess right now. What do you mean? Information getting out about you. Tell me what's going on. I actually posted a tweet on social media about what went down with me yesterday, but I kept it vague, not going into too much detail. To my surprise, the tweet got way more attention than I anticipated. And then my coworker, who got denied entry to the venue, ended up tweeting about your charming little bride switcheroo plan. And, well... Let's just say the news spread like wildfire from there. And that's why there's such a buzz going on among everyone, huh? Why were you posting it in the first place? What sort of trouble have you caused me? I just wrote that my wedding had been cancelled for reasons out of my hands. I said I was in a state of shock and disbelief. And then when everything settled down, I'd give more information about the details. What? What details do you mean? What are you talking about? Well, you see, I'm guessing Brian didn't mention any of this to you. I happen to be a TikTok personality, so my job involves making videos about my life. That's another detail he could have filled you in on. For months now, I've been sharing with my audience about my upcoming wedding. 
which naturally got them all excited and supportive. But since you abruptly changed everything, I didn't feel right about lying, pretending that I went through with it and got married. I believed it was important to be honest and let the news out that things didn't work out as planned. Wait, wait a minute. Someone at work mentioned something about her favorite TikToker getting married. You aren't TikTok Kate, are you? Oh, so you are aware of me. Yes, I'm TikTok Katie. If you're that famous, you should have made that clear beforehand. This changes everything. I may have stepped on a landmine here. I heard about you from my co-worker all the time. She won't shut up about you. Oh, really? Well, please pass along my gratitude to your co-worker for her support. It means a lot. But honestly, we're dealing with some serious issues right now. Because of the attention my post received, the wedding venue has been bombarded with negative comments online. And unfortunately, the new bride and her family have been doxxed and it's causing a lot of damage to her father's company too. Their stocks are plummeting. Like I mentioned before, the whole situation is an absolute mess. No. So do something about it, don't you? This could bury me. There's no way to control this now, but that's not the only issue. Brooklyn, remember when you hit me? I've already put out a police report. Why did you do that? I told you not to. I'm not going to keep that quiet. Why should I? This is a crime, pure and simple, you know? Assault and battery. And crime deserves punishment. And you know, Brian already sensed that something was up. What does he have to do with this? You really thought Brian was going to just accept your swapping the bride out with some convenient story about me running off? He couldn't contact me right away. And then he saw that you'd already hired security and made plans to bar all of my guests from entry? You didn't think that was a little bit suspicious? Or maybe you think Brian's stupid or something? Oh my god, everything is falling apart. So, what should I do? How was I supposed to know that you were famous? That creates a whole new situation here. I don't know how to control this. Maybe you can ask the police for some tips when they're taking you to the station. They're pretty terrible at dealing with social media as well, though. So I'm not sure they'll be of any use. What? W what are you talking about, the police? Like I said before, I already submitted a police report detailing your assaults on me. And it seems your husband has already been contacted by the police on this matter. He's not there with you now, right? No. Where is he? Well, you see your husband's right here, since he came to apologize for what you've done. He told me how you've pulled the same kind of nonsense before. Apparently, he's had to put up with drama you've created countless times before. Never mind that. You reported me to the police, but then there's no evidence that I hit you. You could be making that all up, just staging a crime. Why should the police believe you? Oh, that's a good point. Due to my work, there's a camera to help prevent crimes against me that's set up right over my doorway. Look, just atone for your crime like you know you should. Goodbye. But I'm Brian's mother. That's who I am. You must be joking, right? Right? Where have you gone? Well, well, Catherine. It's been ages, hasn't it? So you went ahead and got hitched without my precious permission. Who the heck do you think you are? Because of you, I ended up getting arrested and dragged into court. Not that I deserved any of that nonsense. It's downright disgraceful that they even allowed such a thing to happen. Then, they slapped me with probation, and I ended up losing my job. The jewelry business used to be my lifeline, you know? And if that wasn't enough, my lovely husband decided to divorce me too. And now, to top it all off, you marry my son without my blessed permission? Just how far are you willing to go to make me look like a fool, huh? Tell me, where the heck are you now anyway? I know you ain't in that same old apartment of yours. Hey, 
If you're watching this, then have the decency to respond. Don't you dare ignore me. Sorry to bug you at work, dear. I know how hard you're working recently, and just calling you because your mom just messaged me. What? My mom? Why is she calling you at this point? Perhaps her probation period is over. That would mean no more restrictions on getting in touch with you. That could be it. After she finished haranguing me for what happened to her, she started asking for our address. She seemed really angry. It was like almost every word was shouted at me. Well, I can imagine she's pretty ticked off. But let's be real, she kinda brought this upon herself. Will she ever learn to quit? She's like a bulldozer on full throttle. So I take it there's no trace of remorse coming from her, huh? None at all, as far as I could tell. So, when are you coming back this evening? Hmm. I think in about an hour I'll be able to go. Work is coming to a close. Oh babe, there's something I've been meaning to talk to you about. I'm sure you remember our first aborted wedding ceremony. I'm so sorry for ever believing the lie that you had eloped with another man. I really don't see how I felt for that. So, that's what you're worried about? Oh, goodness. It's alright, Brian. The whole matter is over and done. It's been three years since that nightmare, and our time together has been even better than I could have hoped. You really mean that? Of course I do. I know that you're a good man, and I'm looking forward to many more years together. And I'm sure you'll be a good dad. I really want to see you playing with our children. Boy, I'm glad I could get that off my chest. Thanks for hearing me out and not being angry. But we've got to get back to the latest crisis with my mom calling you again. Look, shall I try contacting her in your place? Maybe if I get into the situation, it can pacify her. No, you don't need to do that. I can put up with a few nasty messages as long as she keeps her distance. At any case, I don't believe she'll be able to barge her way over here. The sheer distance should keep her far from us. I'll find a way to deal with her. And if she's getting to be too much, I'll just block her. By the way, she doesn't know anything about Lila's connection to me, does she? Yeah, I don't know why she would. It's not like my dad or I would have told her something like that. I haven't even talked to her since the wedding, and I don't think dad's talked to her since the divorce. And they didn't meet at the wedding or anything? No, I don't think so. I guess that's true. Man, what a disaster. Your mom is ridiculous. I'm impressed with how long you put up with her. No more. It's unbelievable how long Dad and I put up with her antics. I've already cut ties with her, but it's still a massive source of embarrassment for all of us. What if you reach out to Lila? You know about their history together. Perhaps, just perhaps, she can put a stop to this rampage my mom seems eager to embark on. Lila might be the only one she'd actually listen to and I'll get in touch with Dad. Maybe between the two of them, they can handle this mess. Got it. I hope that settles matters. Catch you later. Hey, I just found out that you're one of the girls that Leela took in? One more piece of deceit you hid from me. So, I see she's given you a call? Yes, Lila happened to be the head of the home for wayward children where I was raised. And there are plenty of other children who love her dearly for her wonderful qualities. Yeah, yes, save it. Anyway, I was certainly not expecting a call from her of all people. We went to high school together. Oh, the things we did together back in those days. We were thick as thieves. I miss those days. Yes, Lila was extra shocked when she found out what you did because she knew you so well back then. She said that Brooklyn she used to know would never do something like that. I guess you must have really changed since those days. Well, there's nothing to be done for it now. Anyway, against my better judgment, Lila talked me into accepting the fact that you married my son. So I'm on the way over to give you my blessing. What? What is that supposed to mean? 
All I had to do was get a little choked up on the phone and cry that I wanted nothing more than to apologize to you. Leela gave up your address in a heartbeat. She's such a kind friend. They do say it's friends that make the world go round and she knows what's best for you. Lila really told you our new address? Oh yes. Who would have thought that you'd be in California? Such a spectacular atmosphere to live in. I can't wait to be there. What? Leela told me you were in San Diego. I'll call you again when I arrive. Be sure to pick me up. I'll be in touch. Hey, I've arrived now. Where are you all? Get over here now. I need to rest for a bit before we go out to the beach. I'm quite pooped, don't you know? I'm in the lobby at the airport, sitting and waiting for you. Time's a waste in, so please get a move on. Oh, and then I'll want to go sightseeing, so take me around to the best places. I'm sure you know them all by now. It must have been a long trip to San Diego, but we can't go pick you up. It's simply impossible. What? How can you say that? I'll be in a fix if you don't come, so make it snappy. I only had enough money to get me here on the plane. And I have so much luggage and baggage, people won't help unless I grease their palms. You know, I could block you at any point, and maybe I should have already. Brian has already told me it's fine to ignore anything from you. But I know you're a friend of my mom from a long time back. So that's the only reason I was of two minds and responded to your post. And it's the right choice not to block me, so you would know that I'm on my way. After all, my friend Leela let me know where you were living. No, you couldn't simply get away from me. So that means that she sees that I'm in the right. Leela agrees that you should come and reconcile with me. I wonder about that. It sounds like she just really wanted to protect me. You see... I told Lila that if you were really showing signs of remorse, then she could tell you where we live. We reckoned already on the possibility that you'd come flying out to us, so she would have given us a heads up. I was a bit worried when you contacted me suddenly and I hadn't heard from her, but just for a minute. What are you going on about? I don't understand what you're saying. This is all getting tedious. Just get over here soon. Do you still not get it? Don't you see that even your old friend has totally given up on you? Brooklyn, we don't live in San Diego. We don't even live in California. Don't be stupid. Leila told me to go to San Diego. Yeah, well, we've never even been to California. It's quite the wild goose chase that you're on. What? What are you saying? You're telling me that Leila lied to me? That's right. But... Leela would be the last person to do such a thing. It's true that she has a very gentle heart, so she showed compassion many times when it wasn't in her best interest, and has actually been deceived by people a number of times. But she still kept it in her heart, a willingness to give. In fact, from the time I was in the home, she always told me that she wanted me to be a person who could show true gentleness to others too. That's how she raised me. Exactly. So there's no way that Leela could lie to me about this. She's not the kind of person she is. That's how I can be sure that you're lying. Is that what you're telling yourself? After all, Lila gave me the money for the ticket. Yep, she said you pretended to cry and even begged her for the money to get over here. But she was aware of your deception. She said you'd really changed. And she was so sad she hadn't realized it. She gave you the airfare as a parting gift. She thought maybe the landscapes in California would soothe your troubled soul. Finally, she said that you showed no remorse at all, so she wouldn't give you our address. What? What are you saying? I'm saying Lila has completely given up on you. That's what happened. And she told me how close you were in high school, and even after that. But even if you had shown signs of real remorse, I don't really think she would have told you our location. You might be her old friend, but she raised me. Like I said, a lot of the kids who grow up in her home think of her like a mother.
You're saying Leela likes you more than me? I'm one of the many children she's helped to raise. You're an old friend who looks down on people like me. Well, she's dedicated most of her life to protecting us. I don't think she's going to give up her life's work for the likes of you. But that means you really don't live in California. That's what I told you. But then what should I do now? I was planning to live here with you and Brian. Now... I don't have the airfare to get back or money to stay at a hotel. I'm practically penniless. So you really made your way to San Diego on a whim and a prayer. You thought we'd someone take care of all your needs if you could just make it to San Diego? What were you thinking? Brian told you that he didn't want anything to do with you anymore. You really let yourself get carried away. What you ought to do is some real soul-searching on how you've behaved. With any luck, you might figure out how to turn over a new leaf for real. Goodbye! I reached out to Lila, and we both decided to block Brooklyn's number to prevent any further communication. Lila seems to be deeply affected by what transpired with Brooklyn. Their friendship was something truly rare and special. Cutting ties with such a problematic individual is undoubtedly a positive step for Lila. As expected, Brooklyn was caught in San Diego while attempting to skip out on a restaurant bill. How did she think she would get away with that? While the specifics are unclear, I received information from Brian's father that she is currently in police custody. He has also severed ties with her, leaving no one to look after her at this point. Considering she just finished her probation, it seems likely that she will be spending some time in jail this time. I find it hard to imagine Brooklyn genuinely feeling remorse for her actions. It's probable that she will remain unchanged. We can only hope and pray that she'll learn to appreciate those around her during her time in a California jail.